It's Late Night Saturday with Tim Kavanaugh. Tonight, Governor Jim Douglas. With musical guest, Bo Thayer. And now, from Alumni Auditorium, here's Tim. Thank you very much. What an excitable crowd you are tonight, huh? Very nice. With the thanks of our stage manager, Jamie Polly, who's jumping like a rabbit. Unreal. You know, speaking of rabbits, did you hear about this in Hungary? 5,000 rabbits blocked a highway after a truck that was carrying them collided with another vehicle. The truck driver said he only remembered two rabbits when the trip began, but there was a whole lot of thumping going on. Yeah. Studies have found that more and more youths are addicted to video games and suffer from poor grades and family problems. Kids have reacted by saying, I wouldn't blame it so much on the games as I would the weed. <laughs> yes. And, and in Italy, a new study shows that Italian teens are having sex for the first time at an increasingly younger age all the time. Researchers say that it's getting so bad that it's becoming hard to find virgin olive oil. Yeah. All right. Brace yourselves, everybody. Just yes. a moment, Tim. I'm sorry to interrupt all this intense comedy, but we have a little something for you. Jen, Jen, can you bring it out here? Oh, oh look at that, everybody. <laughs> Look at that. Oh. Oh. Happy birthday to you. Happy birthday to you. Happy birthday to you. Thank you very much. Wow. Wow. All right. Well, thank you very much. What a wonderful surprise. I was not expecting that at all, but let's go ahead and brace ourselves. We do have a terrific show for you tonight. Yes, indeed. Because we are blessed by having the governor of the state of Vermont, Jim Douglas, is with us. Plus musical guests, both there and the perfect train wreck. But before we do that, it's time to go up to the studio audience and give away a prize. And we do that with Lois, the hot dog lady, and the word of the week. If you're coffee break banter, you'd like to embellish. We've got a feature you're sure gonna relish. It'll brighten your demeanor. Will it make me feel smart? Then your wiener. Come on, let's take a peek. Here's Lois with the word of the week. Filibuster. Uh, Buster, how are you? Fine, and you? Good, my name is Tim. Mun. Mun? Yes. Nice to meet you, Mun. How are you tonight? Good. Good. Are you from around here? Yes. Yeah? Are you a student or? No, I'm an employee. An, an employee of the show? No. I've never, <laughs> I've never seen IBM. her before. You work for IBM? Yes. What do you do there? One of those techno kind of things? Or? Uh, I'm a programmer. A programmer. Is it exciting? Yes. Yeah, it sounds it. <laughs> do you know, Mun, do you know how to play the game? I think so. You think so? We gave you the word of the week. We're going to give it to you one more time. We're also going to give you two definitions. If you guess correctly, we're going to let you have a spin on the wheel of all those wonderful prizes from our sponsors. Sound like a deal? Yes. All right, let's give her that word one more time. Filibuster. All right, is the correct definition of filibuster a long speech intended to delay legislative action? We can ask the governor about that. Or is filibuster Dr. Phil's little-known rap pseudonym? It's a long speech intended to delay legislative action. You think it's number one? Is she correct? Is it number one? All right, that means we turn it over to you, Miss Jen Jen, for a final spin on that wheel. Let's see what Mun has won. And look at that one more time with all these wonderful sponsors that are there up on that prize wheel. And let's see what that's going to land on. Could it be Periwinkles, the Roxy Theater? Oh, I see Parent Studios. Look at that, Mun. 
Congratulations, Mun. You have just won yourself a $50 gift certificate to the University of Mall. It is Vermont's largest enclosed shopping center right in South Burlington. Plus, we are also throwing in, look at the lovely Miss Jen Jen. I didn't know that we were matching purple today. I'm glad I wore this. Very nice. Um, a jar of Jed's Maple Mud. You can find out all about them at jedsmaple.com. So congratulations to you, and be sure to tune into the big station, 98.9 WOKO, for highlights about the show. We'll be right back with more Late Night Saturday. And welcome back to the show, folks. Thank you very much. To learn more about Late Night Saturday or to request free tickets to attend a taping, log on to our website, latenightsaturday.com, or stop by South Burlington's University Mall for your free tickets. All right, you know what it's time for? It's time to bring up that picture of the week. Here it is right here. We're always highlighting some of the staff members here on Late Night Saturday. And this is, of course, compliments of Parent Studios, who takes all of the photographs here. And we have got some of the staff members. I see Ben Cipinelli, who is our, our director. Some of the students, Brian Agrin, who is the Champlain uh, College professor for the Media Communications Department here. Eric Goodrich, our director of photography, and also a good friend who, who I work with at Channel 3. They're all good friends, as a matter of fact. And we'd just like to say thank you to all these wonderful guys and all of the staff here at Late Night Saturday for all that they do. Big round of applause for them. Yes, you know, uh, we are putting an end to the first season, but we had a great time with the first season. We will be back with an all-new season in the fall. Um, and some of the things to look for are the folks that have joined us here on the stage right now. We have hired a curator of a local art studio called Studio STK. And next season, um, Sage, who is the owner of Studio STK, will be bringing in artwork from uh, local artists. Sage, thank you very much for being with us. Thank you. Yeah, well, we thought it was just important. We, we highlight the musical guests. We highlight, um, you know, some, some of the guests. We thought that there's so many wonderful local artists out there that we should be highlighting their work on our big brick walls here. So you've got four artists. Can you quickly tell us who they are? I do. I have uh, Greb Mamzak in front of me, and I have Nicholas Chappelle right here, and Karen Geiger right there, and Michael Savoy right here, who's up at Burlington College currently, and this is at Studio SDK next month. Okay, and you always are highlighting local artists and everything, yeah. um, and you have something new every single month. You brought every your lovely month. assistant with you. Amanda. Amanda. Th <laughs> Amanda, thank you. And who's this big guy here sitting in front? Uh, this is Art. Art. Yeah. <laughs> Art. So we thought, yes, indeed. We thought that we would go ahead and celebrate art on art, so I think during this entire episode, as people can go ahead and gaze upon all, all of the artwork, they are going to paint something on the back of Art's head. Art, you okay with that? Fine. Okay, good. <laughs> yeah. Do you care what they paint on you? I won't be able to see it. He won't be able to see it, he says. <laughs> And, and that's fine, too. That, that's fine, too. Hey, you know what? I brought in my own piece of artwork. This is a family um, piece of artwork. It's very valuable in, um, in our family because it travels around from uh, family member to family member. <laughs> Please say hello to Pernode. Th this is our chicken. And uh, Pernode, much like the can of Spam here, he travels um, around. Uh, he goes to one family member year after year at Christmas time, and you have to have him be a part of your family um, all throughout the year and show pictures of how Pernode was a part of your family. So you'll see more of Pernode in the future. <laughs> all right, so we're going to let you guys go ahead and uh, start painting, and we'll check in with you throughout the entire show. Great. Okay, and what do we got up next here? During uh, spring is finally upon us, and without it comes more bikers, more people, and more traffic. Luckily, we have uh, R.W. Martin standing by with us with uh, the LNS traffic report. Whoa, busy day out here, but I gotta get there. Can't let Tim down. I've not seen such bravery. Thank you very much. 
You know, we talk about the local artists and everything that's going on, on here at, at the show. Um, if you like the local artists, we've showed a lot of uh, different theater groups, and we will have more theater groups coming up in, in the next season. Saturday, May 5th at Shelburne Farms Coach Barn, there's going to be six local theater groups, including Lyric Theater, Vermont Stage, and St. Michael's Playhouse. It will all benefit the Shelburne Arts Center. And for more information, you can go to www. Dot shelburneartcenter.org. All right, there's still more Late Night Saturday coming up, and we have it with Governor Jim Douglas right after this break. All right, welcome back to the show, folks. We, you are in for a real treat tonight. From Middlebury, Vermont, please welcome the Governor of the State of Vermont, the Honorable Jim Douglas. <laughs> What an entrance. Well, uh, something a little different. I'd rather do that than that. <laughs> you're, you're next on the docket there. We're going to shave your head first. Hey, but how about, how about the ladies that were holding the ribbon? The ladies from Timberlane Dental Group. Could you tell with a big toothbrush you there? Bet. Here's there. <laughs> thank, thank you so much for being with us, ladies. Are you going to go scrub up the uh, studio audience with that big toothbrush there, Janet? All right. Thanks for being here. And, Governor, thank you for being well, here. It's my pleasure. This is very appropriate, Tim, because my wife, Dorothy, has been a dental assistant for more than three decades, so uh, it was great to be greeted by uh, her colleagues. There we go. We planned that. Good, good. <laughs> How is Dorothy? Just great. Yeah? It's a little past her bedtime, but in case you're watching, my dear, I'll try not to embarrass you. <laughs> uh, obviously a very busy guy. Uh, you have been serving the state for, for more than just the governor. You've been serving the state for over 30 years um, with us, um, start, starting way, way back. Uh, this way, is your, way back. <laughs> you're, you're in your second term because you've been the governor since 2002. Actually, third this. term. We have two-year terms in Vermont, which is something I hope the legislature might change one of these days. Yes. <laughs> What is up with that? I mean, what is it? I mean, you're the governor. Can't you just write that in and say, let's go? No, it's something about the Constitution. <laughs> oh. So, so all state, um, state official um, positions are, have to be the two-year. Is that correct, then? Our, our six state officers are elected for two years, Tim. But what's really interesting is our county officials are elected for four, the sheriff, the state's attorney, the uh, side judges, the probate judge. And that's because back in 1974, there were two amendments on the ballot, one for state officers, one for county officers. Uh, the former was defeated. It was right around the Watergate time, and people weren't too thrilled about endowing their state public officials with longer terms. But the county official amendment passed. So it, it's always seemed strange to me. We elect our county officials for four years, most of our municipal officials for three, but the governor for two. Mm. So is that something that is on the ticket to, to, to try and change? I don't take it personally, but... <laughs> It is being considered now by the state senate, and uh, I certainly hope it's something that happens. And, and seriously, it's not going to affect me because it takes a long time to go into effect, but it really ought to change for, for the future, I think, of the state. Well, absolutely, because uh, you, you just kind of get rolling into, into the position, and those two years are up, and you're already back into the whole re-election process and everything, which I know takes a, a lot out of any candidate who, who's running for any type of office. Well, it really does. But uh, on the other hand, it's great to get out and see people to... Uh, hear what uh, their priorities and concerns are, to hear what's on their minds, and to uh, see the wonderful people of this great state. And we're glad that you are serving us, and he does a wonderful job, doesn't he? <laughs> yes. <laughs> now, you, uh, you, you keep a very, very busy schedule. You, um, you certainly are in the public eye all the time, and um, thank you for letting us uh, have a little joke with you there with the ribbon cutting, <laughs> because you are at a lot of ribbon cuttings, sure. but you're at a lot of events. You bet. When do you have time for you? Well, uh, when I retire someday, I guess. But it's, a, it's really an all-inclusive uh, uh, job from a, a time standpoint because there's so many events going on uh, nights and weekends all across the state. And 
It's really important, I think, to be a part of them, to see what's going on, see the great organizations we have around Vermont, the, the wonderful people doing great things in their communities. We recently, recently celebrated uh, National Volunteer Week, and, and uh, we have the greatest number of uh, nonprofit organizations per capita in the country. We've got so many great things happening around wow. Vermont. It's wonderful, really. Speaking of some of the great things, um, I understand that you're looking at changing the state motto um, to Can You Hear Me Now? <laughs> well, I, uh, I'm trying to change it from Can You Hear Me Now? But it's really very uh, uh, frustrating and exciting, Tim, because um, I, I want Vermont to be literally the first e-state. I want, I want to have a state where you can uh, get a cell phone signal anywhere, literally in the Green Mountain State, where you can open your laptop and you're connected, uh, where you don't have those drop calls. And I think it's very important for, for several reasons. Public safety, for one, if in the middle of the winter you need to make a call, if you're in an accident, uh, uh, like the guy on 189 there we saw recently, mm -hmm. um, or, or uh, also from, uh, from an economic competitive standpoint, it's important to, uh, to have that kind of access. We've got a lot of um, uh, creative people in Vermont who need to uh, send their manuscripts or their uh, copies of their um, photography or paintings uh, over the Internet to... Uh, to um, uh, publishers in the big city. And so it's important to have that, uh, uh, that Internet uh, 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 capability. So there's a bill in the legislature now to uh, create a telecommunications authority that will get us to where we need to be within the next couple of years, and I hope uh, before adjournment that that'll pass. That's great, and that'll take a, a lot. I mean, you're, you're talking about wiring the state. You bet. Top to bottom. That's right. Now, is that going to be running along the, the, the interstate corridors? Is that, is that the idea? Well, or? well, it can be different technologies in different places. Uh, it might be fiber optic cable in some uh, areas. It might be wireless. It might be Wi-Fi hotspots. It can be a combination of technologies. Uh, the goal is to make sure that it's literally universal. And uh, we're doing well in the sense that we're going to be at about 90% Internet uh, penetration around Vermont by the end of the year. But we need to get that last 10%, which is kind of tough. It's up the uh, you know, nooks and crannies on mountain roads where it's uh, not very profitable, frankly, for the telecom companies to get. So, uh, so we've got to have uh, the state uh, uh, authority to, to, to get in there and, uh, and facilitate that infrastructure. And I think we can do it. Uh, but it will take first action by the legislature, and then uh, we'll get the job done. Well, that, that's great news. Um, also, um, before we have to wrap things up, I know it's important for you to talk about the Odyssey of the Mind. What, what can you tell us about that? Well, it's a great program. Uh, I'm sure many of our uh, viewers are familiar with it, uh, uh, a uh, uh, competition among the young people of our state who really uh, uh, do some tremendous things uh, on an annual basis. And uh, it takes a little money to run the program, so we're going to have a fundraiser in, uh, in a week or so. And um, I'm going to be on the ballot, but in a different kind of way. You get to vote for whoever you want to kiss a pig. And <laughs> this, is, this is one election I'm happy to lose. <laughs> But uh, it'll be at the, uh, at the school in Waterbury in, uh, in, in a week or so. I hope everybody will uh, find out about it and, and buy a ticket. And buy a ticket, but don't vote for the governor on, on this one. Thank you so much for taking time out of your busy schedule. Everybody, the governor of the great state of Vermont, Jim Bell. We'll be right back with more Late Night Saturday right after this. Thank you all. Thank you very much. All right, thank you, and welcome back to the show. Crooked Root Records released an album in January titled Spend It All. It's already number 25 on the Americana charts. Here to sing off his album, please welcome both there and the perfect train wreck.
welcome back to the show, everybody. Hey, let's check in with, with Sage and the artwork. Let's see the art on art over there, the finished product. Very nice. Look at that. Very nice. We'll catch up with some more local art in future episodes of, of Late Night Saturday. I'd like to thank the governor, Jim Douglas, for being our guest here this evening. As well as both there and the perfect train wreck. Let's give it up. Please remember to continue to support local artists like the folks that you've seen here tonight. Thanks for watching. We'll see you next time on Late Night Saturday. <laughs>